call a meeting to order at 6.01, June 15th. We're going to start off by reviewing and approving the minutes of both April 6th and May 9th. So we're going to start with April 6th. If I could have a motion. Motion. Motion by Judy. And a second. Second. By Bill. And any discussion? Is that just the 6th or the... Just the 6th. Okay. Problem, no. And hearing none, all those in favor of accepting the minutes, raise your hand. This is April. This is April. Do you have to? Absent was can you? Lynn. No, you can, can do. You Damian. can do April. You can't do May. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So unanimous. <coughs> Damien was here for that one. Damien was here for April. For April. Yes, he was. Because he made a oh, second. May, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Bill was absent. Good job. Before I had to say I had before April. <laughs> That's what it says. April 6th. May. Thursday, April 6th. Sorry. Absent. William Mayor of Peace. Okay, so you can't make the second. <clears throat> yeah, we do the second. Actually, I wonder if that was the meeting that I had to leave halfway through. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You did. You had yep. to go. Yeah. yeah. We so put you down as absent. Oh, we put you down as absent. Oh, okay. Okay, we're going to make Damien make the second. Okay. Make the second. No. Okay. Second. Damien made the second. <laughs> Sorry. Don't tell me. Sorry. No. I, I, I'm going to say Bill was here for the. For the first half of the meeting. For the first part, but. Okay, so maybe. You really fine. can't. So what you, what you do. Thank you for. <laughs> so that would be the only correction. And who seconded it? Damien. Oh, Damien. Thank you. So you want a correction too? Yeah, so we have a correction on that, and then we vote. We do have no absence. Okay. But he should be here, and then at the, what time he leaves, I, I, I it should say I at 7.04, Bill Mayer, you left the meeting. <laughs> so you left around 7. Okay, so moving on to May 9th. So absent was Lynn, Judy, and Damon. Everybody in agreement with that? Cool. Okay, can I have a motion, motion. on May 9th? Second. Okay. Discussion? Clarification. For what? On the, when we met with those, that uh, Patterson company, we didn't take any action other than listening to correct? The, um, I don't think we voted, but we should probably follow it up with a vote at some point. That's what we want to do. Do you vote on that? I don't think you No, we did not on vote on that. You're right. Would, would the vote just be to accept? The report. The report is well. I, I guess the treasurer can probably do it on her own. We already did. Because so. you already did, so we can. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a moot point. So we can so move along. <laughs> but so you got any well, other moot point? But you might as well take the vote in case they come back later and say that the school committee voted. You can't. Well, why should we do it? It's already done. Well, I haven't yeah, sent them the money. I can do that in September. I haven't sent them the money. Well, we could bring it up. We could actually vote on it tonight because uh, it's just omitted by the yeah. yeah, it's reasonably. So that would be something that was omitted accidentally, not on purpose or anything. So I don't see why we couldn't vote on that. So I'll take the, the blunt of that, that, that and um, we can vote on that. And then the AD can come after me. It's not Patterson, it's So, we need to vote on that at some point. Maybe when we're just doing some votes, Bob, if you want to bring it back up. Bring it right, right now. Right now. <clears throat> right now. You want to do it right now? Right now. So, do you want to accept the minutes or vote? No, we'll vote and then we'll accept the minutes. All right. Does everybody know what we're voting on? Robert, Absolutely. Do you want to make a motion so everybody understands? Well, we have to authorize the treasurer to invest the money that we have for our open account. And the name of the company is Bartholomew and Associate. Mm -hmm. Bartholomew and Company, yes. That's it. I so, would second that motion. You can. So Judy, Lynn, and Damien can't vote on this. This is a right? Okay, so all of those who can vote on this. Are we, you voting on the minutes or are you voting? No, vote we're on voting. The we're voting on the motion first. And they can vote on the motion. Why can't they? Yeah, they can go on. Because they weren't here. For what? For that. For the presentation. The presentation yeah, but that doesn't make they can still vote to invest the money with Bartholomew yes, and Company. Can. Why can't they? Yes, they can. Even Well, it's just that it's, it's good to learn. It's a good learning. The minutes, I understand why I can't vote, because you weren't here. You don't know whether the minutes are right or wrong, but as far as. But they still have an opinion of whether or not we should invest right. the money. 
I would say so. All right. Again, we're going to be wrong. We're going to be really wrong. <laughs> All those in favor, would you vote, please? Opposed? Abstain? Two people abstain. Okay, now we need to vote to accept the minutes. We've had a motion, we've had a second, and we've had discussion. And hearing no other discussion, all those in favor of accepting the minutes as um, printed May 9th, use your hand. Yes. Um, and then um, abstain is those three bottles. Got it. Okay. <coughs> okay. Whew. Financial statements. <laughs> All right. Good evening, everyone. I sent you um, your financial reports. Um, but before I get there, let me tell you that you've signed off tonight on 28 warrants totaling $1,645,242.79. So the State of the Union, as it stands at the end of May, is that our, our E&D cannot exceed $517,923. That would be 5% of our budget. Right now, we have $378,000 available to be spent. But we also have um, an additional $85,857 in revenue. Um, I do want to let you know that we our Chapter 70 money is over $20,439. And that was because we used the house numbers when we did our budgets and got our budgets approved. And then uh, when the budget process uh, went along its merry way, the um, Joint Commission had ended up raising, I think, the $20 to $25. So that's where the, the additional $20,000 is. Um, our regional transportation is going to be short about $11,000. This is the first time that that has occurred. Um, and I am putting that down to the fact that when I did the calculation, I forgot that we are in the plus side of the fuel adjustment clause. So I, I, when I looked at our transportation costs, I was looking at the contract, forgetting that it would be less than the contract because the fuel adjustment clause has been on our side and we've been saving money. So we're going to be short about 11000 but because we have the 20 over, we're still upside $9,439. Is that safe from my seat? No. Never is. Never is. That's why when we, that's why we budget it very conservatively. A, and we establish the regional transportation revolving account. So because we do budget conservatively, the money goes directly into the transportation revolving account, and the towns get a direct credit on their assessments for the overage in any one year. So in the, in FY19, they will not have a credit because we did not have any excess funds. So, are you finished? No. Do you have a question? I'll ask a question. So we've got we've got three hundred and seventy-eight thousand. We can only carry five seventeen, mm -hmm. and and we have most everything is included in the encumbered list that we know of at this point. No, that's not true. No, other than <coughs> when I talked to you yesterday, you had some issues and some things that hadn't been established, but it wasn't much. Nothing. No, no, no. Uh, exact opposite. We do not have an an operating PO system. What's encumbered is payroll yeah. for salaried employees and anything I know that we're going to do until the end of this year. But any we have bills out there. Donna paid another $50,000 today in invoices. I have no record of that until they get paid. There within lies the problem of me telling you how much available cash we're going to have. So because I have no idea. We committed some of that already. Excuse me? We committed that to next year's budget, some of that already. Correct. We committed... 154000 I believe. We committed the money from our previous uh, free cash, half of it. That's this year's free cash, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, we haven't committed this, but what I was going to suggest... Well, can I finish my report and then we can have suggestions? Yeah. Okay. So the other part of the um, income that we have coming in uh, through April, we have posted $66,545 in Medicaid receipts. We've earned interest through April of 7768 and our miscellaneous income is down to a paltry $2,105. Usually we have about ten grand in there, and I don't know. We just didn't do a good job getting any miscellaneous income this year. Um, so that is what totals the excess income of $85,857. Suggestions, Mr. Digger? My question was 
we have a shortage in the school revolving lunch account? Yes, so what I did with that was I encumbered that. So if you, I encumbered that into your report. So I took what I, what the balance, what the deficit was in April, and if you look on page, I believe it's going to be seven. Nope, sorry. Hang on. Page five, halfway. Page, page five, halfway down, says Darius. Yes, right in the middle. I put I transfer I've encumbered seventy two thousand six hundred and fifty seven dollars and seventy eight cents worth of sa cafeteria salaries to our general fund because we're going to have to can we're, we're, we're going to have to pay the we'll have to transfer the school lunch fund onto here. So I've already made that and I will adjust that when we get the May uh, the, the June results. What I was and how much have we after we're all done? paying these things out of our payroll, which is what you're doing. How much more are you going to have for a deficit in the school lunch account? I won't know until we finish serving lunch June 26th. Today, what do you show for deficit? $72,657.78. And that's the total. That's man. So we don't know what June is. Yeah, but what are we talking, seven or $8,000? Uh, we're talking 72000 Six hundred and fifty-seven dollars right, and seventy-eight cents. That's where we're projecting for possibly June, based on oh. past trends. Well, you serve seventy-two for the, no. So uh, let me back it up. Twenty-five, twenty-four, twenty-three will be the last day of okay. service. Right, so it, you know. I, it could, it's going to come down a little because at June we're, we're basically cooking off our inventory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what I'm trying to I thought we had a running deficit okay. in that account. Going. We do in the amount of seventy-two thousand dollars. That's it. We've taken care so of So there'll be a few more thousand for June, I, we imagine. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining it's going to be less. I think it's probably going to be around 68, 69. 10%. How many weeks are we open? How many weeks do they serve lunch? We serve lunch almost 180 days, but not all 180 days. Darius, what days? Like, we're not going to serve any half days. We don't serve they lunch. Know where our you know, it's not. Is, is this because students. less students are buying lunch? That's correct. Our participation is very, very low. So right now, um, with Dr. Carey, Dr. Carey and Darius have been working right now, um, very all year long, very diligently, and what efforts we put forth have not come to any fruition. So. Frontier is not the only one experiencing this problem. I'm having this problem in the four elementaries too. So we hired a food service consultant. He was here today with us. He's observing um, the, the kitchen staff, uh, how we, what we serve. He's looking at our menus. He's looking at our labor costs. And he's going to be making some recommendations. One of the things we um, have already put in place is that um, our food service manager was on a 261 day contract. We've knocked that down to 190 days. So, 261? Well, because last year it was 261 days. This year it's 260 days. It okay. floats. So now she was on a full year contract. She's going to be on a school year contract now, which is 190 days. 180 school days, five before, five after. Okay. Are we going to end up having to pay around employment for the summer? I don't know, Mr. Decker. Well, that wouldn't start till July, right? Well, Did she she on the fiscal year yeah, she, We're all in the same thing. We're, 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 20, we're full year employees. She's going from a full year employee to so a non full year employee. Okay. I don't know the ramifications of unemployment. She, technically, she should be able to to collect the difference between what she was making and what she is making, but you know, I don't advertise that back to them now that I'm on camera. Well, just well no, question. it's a good question though. So So anyways we still have the same amount of money we just started with. Hmm. You know you started your presentation, we still have that much money. Correct. <clears throat> So we will probably, if we need to, we will spend down to the point that we need to to make to the make sure that we don't exceed the five percent limit. Oh, is there any? No. Spend down. Right. If I, I, I just want to, if, if if that 366 stays plus the 85 plus the 154, we, we oh, could be close. Oh, the 154. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand this. It's coming. Oh, it's the other two together. Then I'll go to Mr. Um, Lesko and Mr. Modesto and ask them for some projects to do over the summer. 
Bob's got a couple in a, on a piece of paper scratched down somewhere, don't you? <laughs> Just a few. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think that's everything. So now, now, now that you two are in the building, do you eat lunch? Do you eat lunch there? I do not. And I do every day. But Mr. Kander, I went to parochial school all my life. We did not have cafeterias, so oh, I'm not somebody that eats in a cafeteria ever because it's never been in my Mr. repertoire Kander. to do so. I'll tell you, um, number one, and, and this is something I'd like you to all you to know, the people in the cafeteria, the ones I'm most familiar with is Waitley School and Frontier Regional. They are the nicest, kindest, most lovely people. Every day I walk in and they, how are you doing? Is that cough gone? They're so friendly and so nice. So I'm always looking forward to coming and buying my lunch. They're very good to me. They're very good to the students. The food is, it's not, it's not bad. It's, it, homemade soups are good. Sometimes they're not homemade. Um, the, uh, but it's good. I mean, it's very good. And if I just want a bunch of carrots and a bunch of peas, I can get just what I want. Um, most, I get salad, I enjoy it. I eat there every day. I'm going to miss it in the summer. It's very good, actually. Um, I enjoy it. I wish, you know, we could have cookies more often and ice cream and stuff, but the law says you can't. That's stuff I'd buy for a minute, you know, in a minute I'd buy it, but uh, it's very tasty. Oh. I eat in the cafeteria and waited last Tuesday. It was pretty good. Homemade, one was a homemade soup, one was a burger, whole wheat bun, a piece of bacon. It was good. I ate it. I saw a lot of kids eating. I saw a lot of kids bring back lunch. And I asked, you know, I asked two of the kids that brought back lunch that were sixth graders that have to be in classes. My mom packs me a great lunch every day. Mm -hmm. And that's what they say. Nothing about, you know, what would you see different? Now, if you could serve mac and cheese every day, I think you would have full participation out of kids, but you can't serve mac and cheese every single day. Is, is there a state or federal mandate that, that says how much a meal has to cost? Yeah, because we participate in the free and reduced lunch program. So federal. I understand, yeah, with, with um, uh, what would be, um, you know, lesser income families, but a regular lunch, I mean, my place of employment, which is in Columbus, Ohio, but the, the caf we actually have a work cafeteria. When I go there for training, they have outstanding food, but you go there and you pay, a, you know, $9 for a sandwich. I, so, I mean, is there anything that stops us from having a real good cafeteria with good food, yeah, you might pay more, but... Nine dollars. Right. Right. And so there is, well, the, the thing is that they will only reimburse you up to a certain amount. Okay. So if you want to have, you know, lobster on Fridays, the student who's non-free induced lunch is going to pay the $15 and wouldn't and have to make up, probably add another $15 for the student that we're getting the reimbursement rate at around what, Patty, would you guess, per lunch? Do you have a general idea? What do we get from the government per lunch? Uh, for free? For free? Uh, $3.17. And and so when you're... Exactly. When a percentage of your population, lunch has to be at $3.00 okay. and whatever cents, um, your um, full pay population you know, can be more, but how much more can you go? Gotcha. And because then, it's got to offset... Correct. Okay. And so, you know, and, right. right, I mean, could you, one of the things you, the school committee could do is you could say, we want to charge more for lunches, but then how far can you go up yeah. to the common, right. the common student, even who can afford it, right. day in and day out, and then, okay. and then we can also have reduced lunch as well. And so what does the reduced lunch percentage look out to be, you know, that kind of thing. So it's the economics of it, and um, so. so. What, what is the current price? Okay. 285. Mm -hmm. What was it, please? Two eighty five. So for a regular paying student. Yeah. So two eighty five. Um, Adults pay four. Oh, okay. So I mean, I I don't know. I mean, if we looked at, did we get three seventeen from the government? I can't. So I can't. So there's a there's a tool that we use, and based on, because we get money from the government even for the kids who pay. 
They give us six cents a meal. So there, there's a, we get money for every meal that we sell, regardless of its status. We just get less money when it's a full paid. So there's a tool we have to use, and they'll come out in July and tell us how much we're going to get for free and reduced. And we take that, and we have to put our price in it, and it's going to tell me if that 285 is going to be okay for the next fiscal year. And if it's not, I'm going to have to maybe come and say we need to go to 295. And the problem with that, when we talk about two ninety five or three dollars for a lunch, is that we've got families with multiple children. So it's not just three dollars a day; it's six dollars a day or nine dollars a day if they've got three children. And that makes it very difficult when they can get a lunchable at Big Y for a buck. It's very hard to compete. And one of the other problems we have uh, here at the high school is that our seniors aren't required to eat in the cafeteria. <coughs> So there's, there's a large part of our population that's 100 lunches a day we're not serving. Do we have a, a number be that, uh, that you're comfortable losing a set amount of money before we finally change chefs? I'm not comfortable losing any money. These programs are supposed to be break even. And everybody that's looked at this program, including myself and Desi and then now our consultant, our labor costs are too high. But the problem at the elementary schools, I can't serve with less than two people. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. So it sounds like you're looking into it. It sounds like yes. they're mm -hmm. trying to. So I think we can leave this here tonight and not um, and, and move on. So we can move on. we got a lot to cover unless somebody has something different they want to ask. But it does sound like you're addressing it. And, um, we really appreciate that. We are working on it. Yes. When we get to the uh, payroll adjustments or whatever, mm -hmm. um, there's still, uh, I think the dollar value listed here uh, probably still re reflects the 260. Yes, I didn't adjust it. So we need to make that adjustment when we get to it. Okay, thanks, Bob. Okay, moving along, Student Advisory Council. They don't meet after after graduation so oh um, okay so then we them. can still ask questions right you can ask me questions so sure. i will do my best so put a question mark at the end of the word field day <laughs> field day. no it's an hour field hour did you have field day yet they reported that last time huh they reported that last time did they have it yet yeah and how did it go it was awesome and how long was it it was too long in minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. They thought it was just right. I thought it was too long. How long was it? Uh, what was it? The classes came out a quarter past. So it's about an hour. About an hour. Yeah. I know. Wild and crazy. Huh? What can you get What's, done in an they hour? Call that a field day? It, it, it sounds like a, a, a reset. Out. So what happened was there was garage, the garage bands were out there. I call them garage bands, but it was the Rock and Red Hawks and some add-ons, and they were playing away, and they had different activities. And What were your activities? Uh, they had the frisbee. Frisbee. And different frisbee games. They had a big game kickball going on the kickball. on that field. They did. Um, there was a water balloon toss. Water balloon. That's three. Um, <laughs> what else was going on out there? Anything like tie dyeing t-shirts? Yeah. Tie dyeing t-shirts. Yeah. Uh, it takes a half an hour. No. Kids bring their own t-shirts yeah. and we supply the paint. That's a good idea. I talk to my students. Gel tin coloring. Uh, what else? Craft like football rooms? things. Just that they do down kind of Smith? relay races. Yeah. Um, it's, it was, uh, you need to come visit us. I think Monday. you have a chairperson. Oh, you guys have going on your right here. We're having field day on Monday. Right. 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 Is it all day? 18. It was a half a day, but there's two sessions, and you have multiple things to pick from, and you can do two things, or you can ask the teacher to do one thing. I'm doing gel pen coloring. Very relaxing, or sketching. You can come in and sketch for an hour. And then I have somebody who's a sketch artist. I tell them. So it's just totally different. And you, and the nice thing is, you connect with kids that you don't see normally. So moving along, unfinished business. Update um, on the building exploration subcommittees. Okay, we had a meeting not last, not the last Tuesday, but the Tuesday before. Um, I did. I do. I emailed everyone. We asked, we had asked the Waitley Town Hall, the Waitley Town Manager, if we could rent a thousand square feet in their building 
to store whatever we have left that needs to be stored. And right now they have, my, my feeling is they declined. They, they don't, they're looking at another option for their building. Um, everything's been brought upstairs. It looks good, it is organized. We can put our hands around it. We're still weeding through some of the, un, looking for unnecessary things that we have. So we're working on that. I don't know what the update on the oil tank is. Bob, have you gotten a quote for that? Yeah, the, 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 there's a contract on the oil tank. They should start next week. Great. And, and you know, as, as far as I know, that will be pretty straightforward unless they find some soil sort of contamination and they dig it up. And at that point, we're just going to have to do it. But I'm going into it optimistic. I go by it every day. There's nothing going on yet, but. But Bob did, Bob did get us a good deal on the oil tank removal, yeah. and he got us a good deal on the uh, on the moving of the files so far. And uh, everybody should know that. But he's definitely. Oh my gosh! Yes. And the basement looks clean. Yeah. Er. Cleaner. Like way cleaner. <laughs> way cleaner. Yeah. Way cleaner. Yeah. 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 Still further down there. So we still have to figure out. There's a lot of junk and stuff. Well, they were going to go out and fill in the basement. When we get the shredding done and somebody in there put the junk, um, the basement's going to look pretty good. Um, the upstairs is about halfway to being really organized, and you can begin to look. You can stand in one place and look around and get a feeling for the kind of stuff we have. And we need to make some decisions about what we're going to keep and what we're going to copy and what we're going to do with what we're going to throw away. Um, I think it's going to come down to a real manageable amount of stuff. I really do. Have we have we uh, attached the racks on the wall yet? Do you know or anything? No, I haven't. I I've got a bunch of other. I've got a I've got a guy that's working for me that does carpentry. He's really busy now, trying to finish up some end of this end of the fiscal year stuff, and I haven't pushed it. Um, you know, if something heated up there and it became a crisis. I would move quickly on it. But I already talked to Rhonda. She says once those get attached, she can. Yeah, her, she's, her and I talk pretty yeah, regularly, okay. and she's That's okay good. with where we are. Good. Yes. What we have to do is figure out when we want to move that building and start the process, because winter will be here before we can think about it. it says Bob on a ninety-two degree day. No, oh, it's 92 today, but come 1st of November, we're going to have to I'm pump an oil into that building. And we need to find out uh, definitely whether the town of Waitley is interested in, in taking that building. And I can give it to them for their taking if they wanted it. Uh, otherwise, we have to go put out requests for proposals under the statute and and take the whatever uh, the quotes are and evaluate them. And, uh, Awarded or not awarded, and uh, but we shouldn't wait an extended period yeah. of time. We shouldn't wait to our September meeting. I was going to say we're going to be in September. Yeah, and I don't think we should wait till September uh, to to do this. I mean, uh, you know, the other thing is I think we should be getting a hold of uh, the uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the shredding company. I sent you the name of it yesterday. The, the company that uh, stores records for people. Oh, Iron Mountain? Iron Mountain. We should get a quote from them and find right. out how reasonable or unreasonable it is. Right. We've, to, had, to we've had a couple of people come, like yeah. we spoke, particularly about digitizing the records, and it's $400 a drawer, so it's $1,600 for one file cabinet. We have several, Lots. several, but, many. Um, as far as shredding, yeah, we, we've had shredding companies there. I think when we left, we yeah, we shredded about three tons or something like that. I'm not wow. really worried about the shredding. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about if we don't have a storage place to put the boxes that we have, mm -hmm. let's find out what iron mountain yeah. charges to, to put them on a pallet, shrink wrap it, put it in their facility. But how, uh, how we access these records on a regular yeah. basis, how practical is that? Well, let them make a presentation as to what, how 
how it works. You own so stock you understand in this company? What? <laughs> you own stock in this company? <laughs> no, but I've audited it. Oh, but it'd be I've, nice. I've done an audit at their facility. I've seen how it works. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's pretty efficient. Is it something that you can access if you... I look at that as more of a long-term situation where you're just waiting your... What is it, seven years or such? Well, it's some of the stuff. Some of the stuff, like personal records, you got to keep indefinitely, unless you know that person died. At that point, you can pull the file file out. Correct. But other than that, personnel records, you got to keep them forever. Forever. Okay. I mean, I, I think until you get seven years, five years. You have to keep employee them. records. You have to keep them forever. That's what I said. You do or don't. Don't. Oh. That's we just do. We just do. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but just because I think this is what Cindy said, long-term options, how often, is there an estimate on how often you do have to go to it, or is it just a... It's, it's a matter of changing the way people work, which isn't always an easy thing to yeah. do. Okay. So we're going, as, as Lynn loves, Dr. Curry <clears throat> always says, we got to go slow to go fast. So we're easing people into how to use the digitalized records rather than paging through pages. And if they want to page through pages, then just print the digitized record and you can page through to your heart's content. Cool. I'm just not going to have digitized records and pieces of paper hanging around anymore. Yeah. We've had discussions in other formats about space in buildings and how, between all the elementary schools, how much excess space we have and how the towns what are they going to do with all this excess space because we have so many less students and we got so many rooms? And we can't find a place to put six file cabinets in four elementary schools in this place? We haven't tried. Six? We, we haven't, haven't tried. Or eight we or tried. twelve or whatever the hell it is? I, I think I think Bill is Bill is right. We we have talked about it as a group. Once all the shredding and all that stuff, we know this is Waitley's, this is Sunderland's, this is Deerfield, this is Frontiers. And then we'll have a better idea. This is how much you, you, we need to find a room mm -hmm. or a spot to put Frontiers paperwork, Waitley's, Sunderland, Deerfield, I just, I just Conway. Paying somebody like Iron Mountain to store that stuff when we have empty rooms in well, five buildings if we have it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I think every building has it. Well, I don't think it's an empty room, but there's, I know in Waitley, well, not we'll, come, we'll talk about like the basement. I've been, I know the basement's been cleaned out to store 12 filing cabinets and some boxes on, on some racks. Probably just probably plenty of room in Waitley. I'm only talking about Waitley. Yeah. But piggybacking off of Bill, could you not just separate Union 38 from Frontier and then put all Union 38 somewhere and go through it some other time? Well, they're going through it. Asked, they're they're going to go through they're it. Gonna they're going to go it through it in the next few months. Okay. She was I mean, there today. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She's go, she's going through it, and then we're going to have this big pile that's going to be shredded, and then we'll have a better grasp on where everything's going to be. So can we go. ask you to check into the different schools to see if there is what available space there is? Because maybe Waitley has more than Conway, and so you could maybe you know yeah. help them out for a while. Somebody made a good point. Whether it was Phil at Jeremy's or Judy Menemans. It's their prop. It's their property. Keep it at their school. Well, I, I totally I mean, agree. I mean, unless they don't have the room right now, right. and then I mean, they can look that's why we to need to that room. shrink everything down. Mm -hmm. Right. Once right. we get done with this Which last you, batch of whoever said that is correct of shredding down the road here. Whenever that's going to happen, as Rhonda's working on it, she only can get over there right a little bit at a time right. to go through everything that needs to be shredded in a big pile. So when they come, hopefully they'll come at the last time to shred it. So Bob, as long as they're constantly working on it, I don't think we need to have. Hey, like we got some oil yeah, down we own the building. There's two, there's two tanks with three quarters of tank each. Yeah, we, That's going to keep it at fifty-five for a long time. But do you want to be trying to put it on the market in a winter or what? I mean, we've got to start to do some long range. I think we let them still work at what they're doing. Until they can, till they can come up with an end date and just get it done. So we'll plan on <clears throat> closing the building, et cetera, et cetera, putting it on the market April next year. Which is probably isn't that, I'm not a real estate person, but I've always heard it's better than fall. That seems like a realistic option as well. That so this that's summer the plan. is. That's the plan. But if somebody comes around. Bill had somebody that came around, you know, just to take a peek at it. If somebody else has somebody that wants to come through, if we get a buyer for it. You know the money. If we get money for it, or whatever we get for it, we can we can do it at that time. There's plenty of storage places around. If we need to move this stuff 
there's plenty of other storage places, not Iron Mountain, that we could put it. But in. we still can't just sell it without going through the proper procedure. Correct. The only one we can sell it to is one of the towns that's involved or the town of Wayland. How much does a storage unit cost? Like a pot? Wait, he's got 100 bucks a month. A company with rolls of them. Oh, yeah, I have storage units. Yeah. Just open a garage door. Maybe we can go to final cabinets. Too. Down goes the garage door. See you later. Bye. That's another you need option. something to win and get it. So you've got schools, you've got where it is, and you've got maybe a storage But unit. in a school, it's controlled temperature versus one of those storage areas where we, we don't want, where we have, we're taking care of moldy boxes now. We don't want moldy boxes if they go into one of those other type of storage. Long, you know, short term, if we had to, probably, we could probably use something like that. But Well, again, you need to move along. We're on you top of it. To I just wanted to ask, when does the Building Exploration Subcommittee want to meet again? July? August? Soon. Soon? Sooner rather than later. Okay. I, mean, I mean, I think once the oil tank is gone, we could see if there was any yeah. other problems there. Yeah. And then maybe some shredding will be done maybe by then. I think I think we need to go have another meeting here once the shredding's done. Yeah, and the oil tank is gone. See, see how much, see what's left. Right. Everything's going to be upstairs, so we can see how much is actually left after all the shredding. And that probably won't happen for a good month, a month and a half, six yeah. weeks. And She'll send us an email, yeah. you know, to okay. the four of us. And, and then September or... What do you think? I'd like to see the building listed and for us to take actual, you know, actions towards selling it or getting rid of it before we're all done with it before it's all just the way we want it and because if something comes up we can we can move on again. that'll that'll incentivize Maybe. us number one but um it's, it, the bill every year that you wait the building de decreases and whatever it's let's just get rid of it and i wouldn't hope i wouldn't I, I, mr deck would love to have weight we take it back i i would say Unless it's in their best interest to do it. We, we know it's in their best interest. It's in their best interest that they would take it. Right. But I'm going to say best interest, they're not going to take it. Okay, that so we'll have to find it. We'll find a question. Them. Can we vote to just let you move forward in that direction to get it going into the real estate thing? Because we don't have to sell it. But if we get all that paperwork done and let and vote to let you do we're on the market and it's available when we're done cleaning it out that's it's all done. but at least you don't wait till you're done cleaning it out and, and then let's go the market process. it for six months yeah that sounds we like a more things can happen at the same time idea so we authorize the business manager and our procurement officer to that's the go same through person the, i know to go through the, the proper procedures to do the request for proposals and just Put it on market. Somebody say so move. No. So move. Second. Second. Discussion. I have no time to do that until probably fall. I have to get close five schools. There's no way I can put that on my to-do list until fall. So who else can do that besides me? Can anyone else do that? Um, I, I can. No, because I'm the MCPPO. Oh. Okay, but we're voting to start that process. So. And that becomes more somewhat of a priority. Do you have anybody that works with you that has any technical competence that no. you could direct? No, I do. Bob, I'm a one man show. I, I tell you that every day. For five schools, I'm a one man show. I have people who process payroll and pay bills, everything else is on my desk. I'm so. wondering if there's any of uh, in the towns, is there any procurement officers that uh, might be able to be appointed temporary uh, as an assistant to you? I help them. <laughs> Deerfield had to make me the MCPPO for the roof project because they didn't have one. Why don't we just make a motion that we, we bring it up in our September meeting. By then, things will be closed out. Less stress over here, try to get it on the market. We're working on getting everything done. I mean, or why or put a for sale sign out front of it. Or and contact do that. For sale can't, you can't do that, Bobby. You have to go why through the owner? proper procedures. Why cannot we vote on it and then she gets to it when she can get to it? If it's not till fall, it's not till fall, but we at least take. Can we at least get a definitive vote? answer from the town of Whaley? Just yes. send them a letter, give them a drop dead date. We need to yes. know by July one. You want this back or not? Otherwise, so because you don't want them going. 
moaning and groaning later because, well, yeah, you could have given it back to us, but you didn't. So, so moved. Second. Second. All those in favor of sending Waitley a letter and requesting a definite yes or no? In writing. In writing? Good. I will write a letter. And then we'll know at least there. Okay. Thanks. Moving along. Thank you. And, e. and, and otherwise put it on the agenda for September to uh, vote the offer. Further discussion on engaging in the process to change health insurance benefits by adopting MGLC 21B, sections 21 through 23. I move this. What? I'll move that to authorize it. To authorize it? Yeah, but it, I want to have some discussion. Well, somebody needs a second first. Hello? Second. Thank you. Now we can have discussion. Uh, this gives us the ability to start this negotiation, to do this going forward. But we don't necessarily have, have to make a change by voting this time, do I understand correctly? Does he understand correctly? So, may I ask a question? Sure. Um, can I have a, a reminder of what the benefits would be um, and what the statute would, would tell us to do by changing such? The, the, the statute, by adopting these sections, it, it's going to allow our um, insurance provider to go out and get quotes for changes in things such as deductibles and co-pays. Um, right now, that those are items that need to be negotiated. Um, right now, in my five years here, in three years, we had no increases to the health care costs. In the last two, we've had 17%. And it's going to keep going up in that direction um, because our co-pays are still $15 for an office visit and ten dollars for drugs and the trust can't sustain that anymore and blue cross blue shield cannot keep our costs down so our options so the the, the Ham hampshire group insurance trust came to all their member towns and asked them to adopt this so they can at least have blue cross blue shield and other providers bid with higher co-pays and the higher deductibles and there is an entire process when we get to the point of where we, there could be some realized savings, and then that begins another process in negotiations with the unions. We don't have to adopt this. The Hampshire Group is not saying we'd get kicked out if we don't adopt it, but if other all the other towns do and they go ahead and we can't, then we have to go find our own health insurance. And this is not a market where we want to be out there on our own, A. And then B, the other thing with Hampshire Group Insurance Trust, if they don't keep their rates down lower than the GIC does, if our rates over a certain period go higher than GICs, we get sucked into GIC, no questions asked. Okay. So this gives us the opportunity to explore to stay independent of GIC. But again, if, if we don't do this and Hampshire Group and everyone else in Hampshire Group Insurance Trust goes with it, then I'm sure we won't be able to participate and then we'll be out looking for a new provider, which is a huge ordeal. And I believe the last time that happened when Franklin County Group Insurance Trust, correct me if I'm wrong, Allison, that was a big, that contract did not get negotiated for over a year. Just to clarify, is this for unionized or non-unionized? For both. It'd be both. So you can arbitrarily or we can arbitrarily change their insurance without? No, we cannot. That's why you're voting the process. You're voting to do the process to negotiate with the teachers any changes that could come about. Okay, that's right. So I don't know if you saw the things in the recorder a couple of days ago. The Act Hall business manager, school district business manager, talking about how they saved a million dollars from because they switched from Franklin County to. Worcester County, Worcester Group, and at the Worcester Group, because it's, the pool is so much bigger, the increases, da, 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 and they're saving, they saved a half million dollars in the first the year. The county hasn't been in existence for 10 years, and um, they were actually, uh, I, if, you're, if, you're, if you're saying they're dinging Hampshire Group Insurance Trust, they refused them entry. Athol applied to be a member of Hampshire Group, but because they're... Um, their utilization was so high, Hampshire Group voted not to accept them, so they had to go somewhere else. Where were they? 
were they before? They were on the road, like, I believe. It sounds like where they went to is a good place. Well, like, well it, could be be better, it could be better than what they were paying by themselves. Right. Like we would have to do. Oh, I see what you're saying. If, if we had to go out on our own. So it's yeah, we could save dollars, but what were they paying before? Right. So it's all relative. So, anyway, my point is I made the motion to go forward, mm -hmm. but it needs to come back to the board for, you know, before we make a final decision as to how we're going. But the way I just understood what Patty said um, is that this is okaying the process. It started. That's yeah. the point. Right. But we can so still it's, it's, it's a look good at it. If we're not happy. Right. We can tread water and try to. But if I'm busy out. selling a building, I won't have time to go out and get us new health insurance. That's true. Well, you're delegating well, we can't all do nothing anyway, it. so. Okay, yeah, that means that there's no further too. discussion, and let's but take them out. What's going on? All those in favor of adopting MGLC 21B sections 21 through 23, please raise your hand. Unanimous for the process. Okay, um, moving along, further review of non union salary recommendations. These are the non union salaries that were presented last month uh, for you to look at and ponder. These uh, represent for the uh, the majority of them, it represents a two percent uh, two percent raise that, um, that was instituted by Marty uh, a couple years ago. It mirrors the uh, raises that the union contracts have, the CBA. Uh, they're they were one percent, two point five, two point five, but we're two two and two. So these are the non-union people. Uh, you'll notice that the director of food services, the first one on page two, is uh, not, it's the days per year say 260, so that will come down. I can give you that figure. And Go ahead. So it would change from the 51,355 to 37,529. Okay, 29. $37,529. Now that person was still working eight hours a day? Yes. Now does that person also share a time in some way? Yes, and Whaley. And Whaley, and so in addition to working eight hours at Frontier, she works? No, it's eight hours her whole day. So she does, uh, I just put it on here to just make it easier because Donna uses these sheets to write the letters, but it's 37 and, but she does an hour and a half and an hour and a half. So it's five hours Frontier, three hours other schools, and then we bill the other schools. So Frontier pays her entire salary and we bill back Wheatley and Sunderland for her time. Is this gonna work better or is she we gonna be looking for a new boss? I don't know. No. I don't know about. Has it been discussed with her though? Yes. Oh yes. Extensively. Okay, sorry, Lynn, keep going. Uh, any any questions? We talked about this of course last month and we just need your okay to go ahead with these. Do you have a motion? Motion. Second. I'll second it. Discussion? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't believe we set the salaries uh, of these people. Mm -hmm. What? No, no. No. Um, and, and so therefore the superintendent uh, has discretion uh, to set the salaries because under every form I don't think we do. Uh, the only one we might have any control over would be the business manager and the uh, Director of special ed. Other than that, none of these people are really Maybe a school nurse. I don't know if a school nurse was covered by that or not. I know. But it, as far as I'm concerned, the school we nurses don't need are in the CBA. Right. What's that? The school nurses are in the CBA. So they're covered by the union. Okay. The union so, contract. But I don't think we need to take any action on this other than uh, Patty's salary and Karen Parentino's. Well, I think um, we can vote the whole thing yes, because please. we vote the whole thing every. Mm -hmm. I have never. As long as I've been here, we voted We vote to accept that. the salary recommendations of the superintendent. Yeah. But, Next but, item, please. Correct. Yeah. But the, but so moved. Thank you. And do I have a second? I just want to make sure the evaluation. You already put the motion in second. I just want to make sure the evaluation has been done on all these personnel. They have. Okay. They actually have. I've been uh, been checking up on that. Okay. Uh, except for the uh, bookkeepers, we have until June 30th for them. The second. 
Okay, so does everybody understand we're voting the recommendations? Whatever he said is true, but we voted every year. All those in favor? And move along. Thank you. Bring it up every year. No, you don't, Mom. Okay, seven. New business. Discussion only of needed frontier regional facility improvements with the possibility of borrowing. Patty, Bob, Darius, and I have met. Patty's been doing the lion's share of the work on this, working with Eastern Bank. They're our bankers, and talking about how we can procure the money we need for these improvements that really need to be done in the upcoming years. They asked and they directed Patty to take what needs to be done and put it in useful lifespan so that we're not borrowing money for something that will be, if we're not borrowing money now for something that's only going to last five years. So Patty it has all the information. She's worked with the, uh, the banker and we met and it makes a lot of sense and I hope that uh, we can uh, move forward with this because there are certain things that the school building is in need of. Thanks, Patty. Thank you. Okay, so um, let's remember I'm an accounting major, not a finance major. So I'm gonna try and get through this very complex thing. So let's save all our questions to the end. You so, heard Mr. Decker? Yeah, I heard him. Sorry, you warned me. Just reminding you. So what I've given you, which I emailed to you, was the statute regarding incurring debt. That's yeah. Mass General Law. Tonight I've also given you the sections of our regional agreements, pages 26 through 29 uh, of the regional agreement around the construction and borrowing. And then the next section um, I gave you, this is what we did was we took all the projects that Darius and Mr. Lesko put together. And they had me break it down by useful life. This is what we call an asset classification. So this is the book life. It's not the true life of an of the like the mower. We could get 20 years, but they call it a seven-year asset. Okay. So we we classified it by by those types of things. So the first thing we said was our five-year useful life at 20,250. Don't bond for them. Take them out. So. You're not going to borrow for 20 years for something that's going to last five years. Mm. So we should take that out. So those are two projects. The uh, we're doing all the phone repairs and installing hand dryers are something that I would have on the priority list for us to do this summer with any available year-end funding, because eventually installing those hand dryers is going to save us a lot of money on paper products. So when we look at the amortization schedule, we've taken that $20,000 off. So then after we looked at all the useful lives of the project, the um, Lori Lombard, who's working with us from Eastern Bank, and this is the same bank that we used when we converted the old bonds into a note that we just paid off last year. These are the same people helping us. So what she is advising us to do is that we would at first not go out to the bond market. We would go to the short-term borrowing uh, market at, at first because we wouldn't be getting the whole two million dollars in one lump sum we would probably be doing these projects over a two-year period so we would go to the short-term note and borrow as we need to do the projects while we're in that period we would only be paying interest and no principal so the way she i can the way i can i can rationalize this in my mind is i want to build a house but before i get the mortgage i'm getting a construction loan and once I'm done constructing, I'm going to take that construction loan and turn it into a mortgage. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do some short-term notes until we're done with all the projects. And then we're going to go out to the bond market and we'll convert those. Now, our interest rates are usually lower in the short-term than in the long-term market. Um, and what we've used for this is that we would do the bond anticipation notes uh, conservative 2.5%. And then when we went to the bond market, we used 3.35%. So if you look, um, according to the regional agreement, at the time of the borrowing, we have to use a five-year rolling average to assess the allocations to the town. So if we were to go forward with this, we would need October 1st of 2017's numbers to do the true allocation, but we're not there yet. So we used 16, 15, 14, 13, and 12. 
So having said that, that would mean Conway would be 15.86%, Deerfield 48.51%, Sunderland 23.73%, and Waitley 11.9%. So these short-term notes also, we would use our local banks that we already have established. We yeah. could use the state house note program um, through the state with, for financing um, of under a million dollars for over 10 years. And we would definitely use the state house program also when we went out to bond because what that does, it, the DOR certifies to the bond buyers that we have the legal authority and good standing to issue these bonds. So that's just a little background information. So if you look across, what this is telling us is that if we were to borrow $2.924,90,000, and let me just say that these are just estimates. Until we do these projects, we don't know what the final number is going to be. It could come in at 2.5. It could come in at 3.1. You don't know. So we're using what we're saying, what we think the projects could cost us right now as the, as the principal amount. So if we were to do the two-year bands, the first two years, it would have a four and a half cent per, uh, effect on the tax rate in Conway, a 0.53 percent uh, cent impact in Deerfield, a five percent a uh, five cent impact on the tax dollar in Sunderland, and a 3.4 cent impact in Waitley. So if you look at the next column, what that's saying is for every $100,000 of valuation of your house, your tax bill would increase $4.45 in Conway, $5.25 in Deerfield, $5 in Sunderland, and $3.39 in Waitley. Now if you notice going down, we pop up in the third year. It goes from four and a half cents to 19.9 cents, and that's because that's when we start paying back the principal. And in years three through 10, it, go, it goes up and then it falls back down because we would be paying off the 10 year assets during that period. So we were not going to borrow more than 10 years for the seven and 10 year assets. So those would be front loaded. And then in the 11th through the, 20, uh, the 20th year, we would be do, making the payments for the 20 and 30 year assets that we would be repairing. Does that make sense? So it did. Is that, does that mean you're open to questions now? At, for this part, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, 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 as you transition from short-term borrowing to the bond, you said that the short-term borrowing, you're just paying interest. Correct. But each short-term borrowing transaction, aren't you also paying transaction costs? That I don't know. Whether it be points or some other thing. I mean, that's how the bank makes their money, is the, 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 the cost on the transaction. So every, every single, every single short-term loan that we take will have some transaction costs. Well, I'd have to go back to uh, the bank and ask that question, but she's saying that we would owe $73,102 in interest on, on $2.9 million. That tells me they're making some money, about $73,000 worth. Right. I don't know why they charge us Points more. or no points, that's that's a lot of money. It's sort of like we're going to go out and ask for a line of credit of 2.9. How we draw it down and what we pay back is going to be... It is what it is. They're not going to say, okay, we're going to give you a, two, a $3 million line of credit, but every time you withdraw, we're going to charge you another $1,000 for a transaction. I don't think that it works that way. I think it's more like a home equity, equity loan. So we have the line of credit, and we can draw from it, and then our, our interest does go up the more we draw. Check out the fine, the fine print before you sign on. Well, this is just an exercise, Phil, to give you guys an idea of what this would look like if we were to do this. I don't have I's dotted and T's crossed at this time. Thanks. Um, so, in year 20, when we only owe 110000 why would the town of Conway for 100000 be $6.93 as opposed to when we owe... Um, $120,000, uh, $1,120,000 in year 11. Because going we're going to have paid off the 10-year assets in years. Look at look at Conway's numbers in years 3 through 10. It okay. goes up, and then it, we're falling down. 
So then it keeps going okay, down yeah. every year. Thank you. So I just wanted to just number one thank you for putting it in concise language um, yeah, because yeah. now it, it makes a whole lot more sense to me, especially how we ask the towns for their approval. Uh, that language was was very important. Um, the other thing I, I just would like to say is that yes, we're going to be incurring some debt. But such debt that we incur and then the taxes that we're going to have to pay is going to help the overall value of, of the community uh, because we're improving the community school. Um, so, and I, if I could bring you into the conversation, Bob, um, do you feel as though this is reaching closer to your overall goals? What, what I tried to do was come up with a list that would carry us through 10 years. No. Yeah. You know, bonding you know, is a longer time than that. So the projects we have are going to get us um, through the foreseeable future. And, and I think the number, you know, we talked a little bit about trying to prioritize stuff. And we said, well, why? I mean, if, if, if you start cutting out projects, <coughs> on a bond, then you find yourself in a position where you're committed for a long term on a bond and still have projects to do. So I'm pretty confident with this list. I've spent a lot of time with Darius, and I've spent a lot of time with the custodial staff here in the high school. And, you know, barring some completely unforeseen disaster, these are the things that need to be done. This is not... And then they may need to do the glass up there or any other it does. It's all, it's it's all, everything, everything is in there. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. It's in it's Prego. It's in there. <laughs> oh, no. It includes new bleachers and a gym. No, I see that. Yeah. For uh, some yeah. of the items um, to make it you know I guess I don't know palatable for taxpayers like uh, I, I think we have access to use the tennis courts but why couldn't you know Deerfield residents use the track? Mm -hmm. Why is that closed? Darius? Why can't we um, use it? So for the track we did you know have a thing where we opened it up. It, this could be changed by creating an entrance that doesn't allow bikes to be put on the track. Because the track is so far from the school, we do lock it because if the kids went out there um, on their bikes, did skid marks, they could do tens of thousands of dollars of damage to the track surface. And so that was the reason why they were locked to begin with. But I've seen entrances to the track where they do the zigzag thing, where you have handicap access. I don't know, we can look into seeing how we can make them open. Um, but that was the, that's the reason why they aren't open. Many other, not many other, other schools that have tracks so close to the building, they're kind of monitored by, you know, any kid could be on the track right now on the bike and we would never know, um, you know, that kind of thing. So that was the, that's the reason for it. I'm open to finding solutions to making it more accessible. Um, there was a club, a recreation club last summer that got the key. Um, they gave them the key and they opened it up for morning walks and evening walks and, and they did that for, they haven't approached me for this year because I don't think participation was at the level they wanted. Um, but you know, we're open to it, we're open to it, it just has to be, you see, Somebody's the, gotta have a right, you understand what the problem is and the problem is there. Um, you have to remember that the, the tennis courts, I mean, we shouldn't get into, Right now, we, we have in our pre-conversation, we were kind of like, um, we could go through what we're looking for and examine each one of those things, but we wanted to break up this part to understanding the loan process. What are the different options to the slew of things that we have before we start nitpicking every single project? So I know someone can go in there and say, well, what do we need this for? And then we need this more. And that can, that can go on all night, but we're really, so, I'm saying that before I go into answering more questions, because I can go on and on, and then Bob can go on and on about what has to be replaced and what shouldn't be replaced. Um, but, sorry. It's, so, it, no, but it's, it's really about it's, this process, I guess. Right, right. Um, okay, um, sorry, Judy, can I ask more about just the timing? I'm just, I want to understand. Like if we're, like, okay, we talked about the building goal, and you know, now that's fall. And so what's the goal for this? So we've, we've laid out the process for it, we're discussing it, 
where are we going with this in September? Or what's the plan? Are we trying to get on to April warrants? I don't have a goal. No? Who has a goal? Uh, I don't don't have 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 no, Let me do. tell you what my goal is. So, yeah, yeah, she let's, does, look, let's look at it from a, let me okay. take a step back. Okay, we, the building is 20 years old and it's got issues that are, things that are 20 years old. And I think Bob really, you said it earlier in the meeting today, which I thought was great. In this, in this, jump in and correct me how you said it, but there are different ways to approach what we do with our aging building. Okay, one, you know, we kick the can down the street find money to duct tape things together as it comes up. Okay, we have a few big things to get through. We try to find money in this year's budget to handle this. The next year's money, we try to handle the track. The next year money, you know, all with all these other things that are kind of falling apart around us. That's one way of doing it. Until eventually enough things fall apart where we say we need to rebuild the building. You know what I mean? Or go after the big money from the state. This is kind of the in-between kind of thing. It says we have a good facility, it's just areas that are tired and worn by 600 teenagers day in and day out. And this is what can get us through the next 10 years. Now, someone's going to say you're asking for a 20 year bond. And this is the area where, you know, I step back and look for other people's thoughts and ideas when we talk about this is that we are looking for 10 years and this is a 20 year bond. Other things are going to break. This building's 20 years since the renovation with a lot around, there's a lot of broken things. There are things that are not on this list after 10 years that are gonna to start to creep up. And that's, you know, how do you project that out? I don't know, I mean, that's, you know, um, it's, a, it's an honest thing. And in, in 20 years from now, realistically, I think Bob would agree, we're gonna be looking at a roof on this building um, and other major, major things that are gonna reach, you know, that probably none of us will be around the table to discuss, but we can't set up our So I'd time. like to dovetail on, on that because I, I still go back to, this is this money gets us where we need to be right now, but we need to go back to the regional agreement and put capital budgeting in the regional agreement so that it's assessed every year to the towns so we don't have to do this every 10 years and borrow $3 million. Every other regional school district has a capital budget assessment where the towns put money in at like a kitty that we save and when these items come up, we already have the funds. And, and we get on a regular maintenance schedule so that we're keeping our assets in shape rather than waiting for them to fail. Do you like take the, like care the, of that right after you do the um, Oh, I, that's, your, the that's your deal. That's the school committee's deal. You gotta go to the towns that's and redo easy. the regional agreement. Bob, is, is, that, is that like your money for the blue school that for five years, every town gave X amount of dollars and went into okay. the for the repairs? Yeah, it would be every so, year. Yeah, so, we, okay. so you know what, right now we have our operating assessment, we have our transportation assessment, and up to this year we had a debt assessment. Will there be a fourth assessment called capital repair fund? Right. And, and so where Bob is also kind of saying is this type of plan, we are on top of the maintenance in the fixing of the problems we have. The other one, we are gonna to have to be reactionary each year to find what is the most broken thing to fix that first. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? As, as we go through the things, there are things that, you know, um, that are, are broken and there are things that we have, you know, I'm looking at the track and, and, and again, I'm gonna throw the invitation out there as because I know this can be a several meeting discussion. Feel free, it's a good time of year. If you, if you have some free time, you wanna walk around and look at some of these things, myself or Bob will walk you around to, um, especially even during the summer when I'm around, to see exactly what we're gonna talk about. When I talk about the track, let's go out and take a look at that. So you wanna you want to see, you know, seeing is believing in, in, on some of these things, and looking at the different components um, throughout. So I kind of throw that invitation out there. There's no real, um, and then, nothing really luxurious in here. Um, I think the other thing that, that the school committee needs to think about is this something we want to present at their annual town meetings or is this something we want to request a special town meeting for because there is already so much on an annual town agenda we're already fighting our budgets will we get the attention that this deserves and then make your priorities do we want to do this in the fall push the building back sit on christian lane maybe till january do this in the fall push the building sale till january I mean, you're going to have to set your priorities and tell us where you want us to go with this. But I, I don't think that this waits till uh, the April town meetings. Lindsay, I think she just answered it. We never really answered. 
Judy's question of what's the time frame for this? Because we're from Sunderland who didn't pass its own budget. Right. Tomorrow, so Friday night. what are we going to be doing with this? See you Friday night. Good times. It's one Friday night. Sweet. So, I mean, um, good times. I got to admit. My day suggests <laughs> that we uh, schedule a tour of the facilities for the September meeting and invite the selectmen or the finance committees in these respective towns that we're going to be discussing this at that night and that we anticipate we will probably vote to incur debt uh, and the thing is if we vote to incur the debt and if we've done a well enough salesperson's job of the select and the finance committees and it's in, our, in the best interest of the district they may not call for a special town meeting they may let us just go ahead and issue the debt if they don't like it they will go for a special town meeting and set it up they've got so many days to notify us uh if they if we if they object and want to go to but i think we need to take them on a tour of the facilities and show them what we're talking about and spend the time you don't have to do it that night we can do it that week or a week after or something like that where we just make a presentation to them and uh that's probably the worst time to take them in What's that? You guys do such a great job here in the summertime making this yeah, place really? look good. Right. You bring them in here in September when everything is clean and painted and Call nice. Look. No, so I'm serious. You're laughing, but I'm serious. We bring them in here now. now. Well, we can bring them in June. We can bring them in this place. Not September when we're spit shining. But nothing's going to, I don't like the idea with you can do it next week. so many I don't people. Care. It well, would be I nice if maybe you tour. could do it town by town. I think that's great. Idea. And then, like, say you do Conway, and Conway can come in anybody else, but I, I don't really yeah. have this vision of 30 people walking around really getting that. Well, we that did it with just us, remember? Understand it. And even that and was, it was hard because you can't all get in the boiler room, right. you can't all get in the locker room. No, but yeah. well, I, like the, I like the one town at a time idea because then each town feels like they're getting attention and their concerns are being listened to. Right, with their school committee members there, right? Correct. You're saying that? Right. School committee and school whoever they can get. I heard that without you saying it, Darius. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so I guess, we can, certainly um, yeah. can you get in touch with a selectman and see what they could coordinate maybe? And then... When, when would we want to do this? Would we want to do Before you start now? painting the building. Well, yeah. I mean, most of these things that we're looking at are, are not a cleansing. It's, it's not a cleansing yeah. thing. So, to be honest with you, what's broken is broken, and that kind of thing. So, the building does look shinier when and that kind of thing. But um, because I know we exactly. only really meet every other Monday in the summer. I have to say, oh. for our custodial staff, this building never does not look clean right. at any point yeah. of any time yeah. of the day. Well, even in the winter. Last day it got a little messy. Well, that was their that was their <laughs> doing. I, I but it was cleaned up promptly. I can tell you, Bob has some pictures on his phone that are a little frightening. For instance, underneath the walk-in freezer, the from the cellar view, looking up at the. Can we do that with a smaller? Yeah, well, that, what I've what I've done, and at some point I'm very willing to share it, it, is I've been embedding pictures of problem areas in the spreadsheet that I use for the budget. Yeah, and do, they're very visual and they kind of grab you when you look at them. Maybe we could do a little presentation sure. and then take that walk. Well, quite frankly, then we could even put that online. Um, we could go Facebook Live. We could put those, those things online that's going to be fixed. Well, I don't know. I'm trying to think about, you know, if it goes to both the towns and they're going to discuss it. But the towns don't have to make us take it to a town meeting vote. They'd be crazy. If they're convinced that what we're talking about has an awful lot They'd of merit. They'd be crazy not I don't think any town would be They would be would that, it, would that mean? Three out of four towns. No, you yeah. have all four. 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 So I think you have to you have to keep it as open as you can to every member of the they community. They might buy into it. I've seen. Yeah. So I just want to to back up. So if four out of five towns wanted to accept this and get a bond, but one town didn't. You yeah, four out, out of five is good. Three out of four. <laughs> three three out five schools are four towns. Four right. out of five are good to go. Excuse me. Yes. Greenfield doesn't have a say. <laughs> if Greenfield votes, it doesn't do it. Exactly. Doesn't matter. They vote down entirely. But we need all towns. Yes, yeah. it has to, to be unanimous because everybody's going to be paying. Yeah, right. Um, I just have one more question before we move on. If, um, on page 27 at D, where it says Conway only has to pay 9.5 percent, I think I could sell it. I think that go back to those. I numbers. think if you read further, that was um, 
upgraded with a new paragraph. <laughs> I was I was very excited when I saw that number and it changed to fifteen point eighty six. So oh, sad but true. Um, so do we know? I, I just feel like we should move on, but I'm not sure what we we've, we've decided to maybe have to put out to the towns to maybe have meetings and again, further discussion. I feel like we, had, we actually said two things. Somebody can correct me. If I'm okay, wrong. go ahead. The, the one thing we said was have this conversation with them. But the second conversation I actually heard, or the second option, was the conversation about an actual capital account. That they actually pay into a capital maintenance account. And if they would be willing to do that, then maybe it's a different conversation or it changes the nature of this conversation. Would it? Well, I think I think it's, I think we had, so when, um, before Dr. Carey's arrival, when, um, Marty Barrett first came on board. She had she had created two committees. One was the long range planning, and one was the long range capital. Yeah. We attended several long range capital plans, and we had a plan. Um, and then whoever was the note taker's computer blew up, and nothing ever came out of that committee. They kind of just stalled dead in the water. But one of the one of the this was one of the suggestions that we borrow to get everything up to shape, and then work on the regional agreement. This is exactly what one of the, the idea that came out, and, and Skip Olmstead, if you're watching, and Scott Bergeron, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because they were served on the same committee, but this was the, the gist of what we were going to recommend. Borrow, fix what we need, but also work on the regional agreement and have a, a plan so that this doesn't happen again. But this wouldn't affect the borrowing. The, the, we're talking two so separate correct. issues. Yeah. I just want to be sure. Right, but I, I wrote that down so that we know what we got out of this so we can not lose sight of it. So um, I guess we're going to leave it up to the school to get a hold of the selectmen and to set something up and then uh, just yeah. let us know. We, we uh, the, um, I'm sorry, I have a meeting with Patty and the town managers. Managers. Uh, the four town managers on June 20th where we will be, uh, I will, we can present this to them and, and see what their interest is. Uh, the reaction. The reaction. <laughs> oh, I think they'll be very My question that. is, would it be harder to get the regional, the regional agreement changed because with the regional agreement, we only need three towns to agree. No, no, it's no, a four-four. Four. Four. It's you a four-four. Change four. the regional agreement unless the only all four right. towns. Three but budget. if it's a budget, yeah. I mean, it's three. well, yes, when it's budget. But right. this is changing the actual no. wording of the agreement, right. so it's a four-four. Four. That's an operating right. budget. But once it's changed, then we would. Then it's the three for four when we go with the budgets. Yes. It's it's that, it takes four out of four to get us to change it to three out of four. Yeah. Correct. That's <laughs> always that. It's always that's 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 that one we're talking about. I would miss out. Any town would want to change it. We want to change it to three out of four. It's going to take four out of four to make that goal. Okay. So if you could okay. take uh, Bob's embedded figure uh, pictures with you when you make your presentation, okay. yeah. we still probably will. help. We okay. around the idea of spending the light money on the track. I think that's just no. That wouldn't be because the like, tracks would be incorporated into this. I know it's in here. Still have eighty one. We talked about it a month ago. We did. And we we got to go ahead to be able to use the leftover money in the lighting account, and we thought everybody thought that fixing the track with that money was under spoiled purpose because it's outside. That money was intended for outdoor stuff, and I didn't just didn't know if that got. We could use that. To, we could use that to knock down the price of that line item on this. Did we vote on it? No, because no. then Mr. Decker said that we probably shouldn't do it. So, so, so we can the, use what? Mr. Decker. If we vote on that to knock down that line item, this bottom number comes down? Yeah, but we're yeah, right. so we at about 110 and we have 85. From what I understand, we have 85 in the light and we're looking at 110 for the whole. We were, look, we were talk briefly about whether there was any way that we could make it happen for 85 as opposed to 110. Well, why don't we have 35 left over? Probably in, as of June, before June 30th, we could put the 35 together with the other money and we get the track done. And we can do that tonight. And we got to do the tennis court again? No. We just did it with CPA. Down here, we did it with CPA money. The, CP, the, the tennis court was just a, sh a fix. That was a fix. That was a band aid. That was a band aid. 30,000 dollars band aid. Yeah. Tell us about that. 
It says net defense, I think. It says net defense, doesn't it? No, it says two inch overlay, 125,000. Yeah. The tennis court. The tennis court has just been a huge ongoing problem. The base underneath the those needs to be replaced. Um, we've done several patching jobs. They're very, very expensive. Where we put the patches they've held, more cracks keep opening up. The project that's in here is a two-inch overlay that'll get us through 10 years. It's not a total rebuild of those tennis parts. Um, the tennis parts are an expensive option to keep functioning. Would it be more than 110000 Yeah. Is really, in order to be sure that those tennis courts have a long life and don't keep coming up with these maintenance issues, what we really need to do is, is dig up the entire tennis courts and put in a new case underneath them. And, and that's... And how much is that? I would know the edges are the Is that like 20... Is that like 20 years now? Or is that in 10 years? But are we talking like... Really? I guarantee you, if we spend this kind of money, we'll get another 10 good, oh, okay. 10 good years right. out of the tennis court. But, Bob, if, to, to really dig up the base, are we talking a quarter million dollars, a half a million dollars? We might be approaching a quarter million dollars. Wow. Yeah. So, more. No, go ahead. So, more importantly, though, back to the original, the track services over 120 students. And if we do have this money in this light account, I would really encourage us to consider. Yes. Well, we're, oh, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. I was oh, just right going to ask Bob, where did you say the 35 would come from? Well, we, Betty just told us we had X amount of money that would probably be available in the end of June. Mm -hmm. Should be looking for projects for it. You can't so spend why the 85 without the 35. Correct. Is there a better way to? Well, we can do them. And we the way it goes. So the the danger in what we're doing right now is we're looking at a list and we're picking and choosing. Because then you can come back to me and I would say, is it more important to resurface the track or fix the library? Well, we're talking about the track. You know what I mean? And so when you're talking about the extra track money and applying the money to it, I understand that you need one for the other. But then there's a lot of other things that, you know, we would argue that either are safety issues or other issues that also have to get done. That's why it gets hard to kind of split the, the number one list. Track is on the number one list, but there's also other things on the number one list. However, and so, the lighting money, the intent. I understand, I understand it's applying that, we but we're gonna use up all the excess just to take care of the track. That can't go We would counter with exactly. 85. Can I, can I make a suggestion? So if, if we're looking at wanting to take something off the list, Let's look at the seven-year assets and not funding a seven-year asset for 20 years and use that money maybe to fix the goalposts or something else on the football field like the scoreboard because those are seven to ten-year assets where the track is a 30-year asset. So if we're going to be pulling things off the list, we should be looking at the less useful life items and use that money for those items and then not bonding for 20 years for a seven-year or ten-year asset. That was a good counter. It was a good count. It was a good, you got a good point. point but I, I got a want. better one. What? Try to get more night nights out there, which put some lights on either the softball field or the baseball field, and have night games. Nobody wants them, Mr. Holla, especially our neighbors, and not our coaches. They either. are annoying. <laughs> okay, There's so no interest in night games. We just so, ran around. I'll say, I'll say that to Greenfield and Turners. I have them all the time, and they charge admission for twenty years. I know. I'm a little uncomfortable with that. I don't understand why. Mary and I are having a sidebar on 20 year loan for a 10 year project. For a 10 year loan. Exactly. Because they put down the, the, the mower is a 10 year. How long have we been using our current mower? How many years old is our current mower? Our current mower is probably 12 years old. We've only owned it for about four. Right. We bought it used. But we could, you, we could probably get another four years out of it. Yes, but every time I s submit repair bills for it, I'm asked. By Mr. Decker. <laughs> it was expensive, the, the rebuild this spring. Seven grand was it? Just because they classify it from a depreciation purpose, Mary, as a 10-year asset, that doesn't mean it only no, lasts I, 10 I years. I understand that, but like, how much did we borrow when we built the building? And that was a 20-year bond? Yeah. It was 23. $23 million, right? Over 20 years. So why are we taking 20 years to do three million? Is it three? It yes. is three. Just yeah. three. So basically because we want to keep the assessment low to the town. 
to make it palatable to the town. Maybe the towns will say, we're for this, but we don't want to do 20 years, we want to do 10 years, and let's see what it looks like in 10 years. Yeah. Can we get that information for them before they ask? Is well, you guys asked me to go out and get information for a 20 year. That's what you asked me. I know, what I'm saying is, um, I we did do that, but we, we are asking right now for... And you wonder why I don't have time to sell a building. So, we are well, asking... There's, there's time for that. We don't have to do that this week. Exactly. There's, there's time. We need, I think, before you go to, before a town, you need to be able to present other options be, instead of just one and then have them so go back So would you like me to do... This. Wait a minute, I'm not done talking. So instead of them asking us then for a 10-year option, we need to have that 10-year option. So that's all we're saying. And I hear that, but I get I get frustrated because you guys ask me to do one thing and I spend all day doing days doing that and then I come here and you'll say, "Oh, well what if we did this?" Why not? It's like if you go to a restaurant and the waiter comes and says, can I take your order? Yes, I'll have a soda. Here's your soda. Then the waiter comes back, well, you know what? Now I'm going to have an appetizer. They go back and they get it. Give me the whole order. If you want to see 10, 15, 20 years, I'll do that. But sending me back and forth isn't productive or efficient. And that's where some of my frustration comes out. <laughs> Pardon? We're their waiter. If they want to ask us a new thing every single time, I, it's I their job. It's their, their, it's their prerogative at the restaurant. I don't know that that would have come up except for what Mary just said. I, and I think you've got a great point. Right. We borrowed millions of dollars for 20 years, and now we're borrowing hundreds of thousands for 20 years instead of, well, 3,000, 300,000, sorry. It's borrowed for um, million, million, yeah. three million, three million, three million. I'm sorry. Instead of 23 million. Exactly. And for the think, same amount of time. And I think that I will do it conversation Mrs. Right wouldn't now. evolve without hearing everyone. All that kind of stuff. So. What's, what's interesting yeah. is if we had, going back to what Patty talked about, it's that capital improvement account. The year we finished paying off the bond, I remember that year, it was a good year to have that money. But if we had taken the same amount of money we were putting through the bond to go into the capital improvement, we'd be, we would have been far ahead. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Instead, we took it off the books. And, and any school is on a, without a bond is like, it's like a house without a mortgage. Exactly. You know, if you have other debts going on, you should be having a mortgage. Yeah, that's, you know. I, I, I just want to say, I mean, I feel like I have to say, not every town has their own capital plan. Right. You know, they don't have their own capital accounts. So I hear what you're saying, it's a great idea. But they can't, in a, in so I'll use Sunderland as an example, Sunderland cannot get a capital account passed. And they've tried multiple years. The town will not support putting money aside for future to do's. They would rather pay for it when it happens, or not, as the case may be. Right. And then so, that's what happens. I, I hear what you're saying. I think that's a tough road. I mean, it's, you know, in the scheme, in the scheme of things. So it's, so. So they, I think it's very important that we focus on exactly what we want to do for these projects and what have you because if we're not clear as to what we want to go forward with you're going to end up with some town somebody in some town saying i don't like that i don't think we oh, can do that we're not doing that again we're going to have a bottom line number and we're going with one number that's right going with a number it's not, not going to be a selection that's, 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 that's the is. point that i'm trying to get at Fired up there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to make sure that we don't. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Yeah, I'll take no, the I think truck. we all agree. Right. I'll take the pickup sure. truck, but we won't put electricity yeah. in the garage. So it's dark in the morning. Leave flashlights. I think it's a yes. No, it's yeah. either this number or no number. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. Okay. Bond. Yeah. But but as to bonding it over a ten-year period instead of instead of a twenty, that should be a hard computation. Uh, well, I'm not, I don't know that because I don't do those computations, but I will say that I personally think we should give options. Yeah, I'm going to get the Mrs. Wimmer. Thank you so much, Ms. Kavanaugh. Um, I think Patty has to leave, so if anybody has any other questions um, one, one last question. Can we just go back to Mr. Smith's question about that lighting money? Can we, is it possible that we can decide tonight, or should we just table that as well? I, don't have I, I think I think it's it's a concern to start pulling things out of this plan. I really do. In listening to what Darius is saying, what Bob is, has presented to us on numerous occasions, if we start pulling things out, we're opening up for hours long discussion on on a lot of things, and opening up to the town to start to the town to start to pull things off. This piece of paper wasn't on the table last month, and that was a great idea take the lighting money and fix the track. This piece of paper shows up and all of a sudden, not such a good idea. I don't understand what happened. 
can we make it generic rather than just saying it's to the track to say this lighting money 85,000 is towards this capital improvement has to be used outside the intent of the, the gift was sports the fields the field. yes so I would just like to just take an opposite tack from that I, I, I just think that we should there's money sitting out there it doesn't make any sense just to hold off for the sake of holding off Let's we, we we agreed to spend it on the track. Let's just do it. There's not enough. There's not enough. That's no, why it was. It was. Let's, see, let's see. Let's see if it could I'm be sorry. done. It was. It was. Let's see if it could be done for that amount. And it can't be. It's 110, right? So I have that. No, but we can and move to. But can, I ask, can. can I ask you a question? Yeah. The 110. Does that include design fees? Not necessarily. No. Right. So it'd be 110 asked, plus design. I was asked to put together list of projects and it's why there's a lot of danger with messing around with can we save a little money here or there because if these get lumped into bigger projects the, the bigger projects we try to do it once the more involved we're going to get the design fees um, when, when, we, when we start doing the projects and we keep some of them small we can maybe save some money um, it's kind of why I said we don't want to kick the can down the road till everything falls apart and we have to go to we have no option but to go to MSBA and then it becomes a big project with tons of design fees. Anyone else? But you know, there are you know, if, if if we had a chunk of money for the track, I mean I like Patty's idea about doing some of the things like the goal posts and that sort of thing. But we could probably do something like the you know the, the runways they use for the high jump and that sort of thing that's a little separate from the track but you know the more we try to mix and match those those things it gets complicated in time because the problem is the goal post isn't going to sprain anyone's ankle is the track going to sprain somebody's ankle is there is there a safety issue there as you said when do we get into that safety issue is it good for next year or is it already creating we're already in for for next year we're looking at two years out because there's no way, even when we talked about it this right. year, when I went on look at the track, you know, it's it's getting in rough shape. I think we we probably can get through another year with the league knowing that we're replacing the track the following year. They'll give you kind of a break before they give you a hard time or anything. Because officials can cancel a week if they feel the track is unsafe. Right. But you know, when it's coming, you know, it's a, everybody knows each other knows what's going on. So I think two we, years. I think in next, following next spring, if we don't have it for the next spring, they probably won't be able to have the meets at our track. Would be my guess. Again, I'm talking about looking at the wear and tear that I see on it now. Well, so my point being that we would have a better grasp on all of this by next spring, also. So we're not going to be able to fix the track by next spring if we need to. If you vote for it this... now, they might be able to get it by next spring. But I'm just saying, if, when we, we, I don't know what we're pointing at here. We're pointing at the big picture thing, Correct. the big loan. It's not going to get through no, towns until next spring. So this is obviously. going to be the following. So we either have to be able to put it off for two years. Or if we want to do it next for next spring, we need right. to vote the hundred and ten thousand plus. Right, and 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 I and I agree that the light money will take no matter when we do that, the light money is going to take the chunk out of that. Right. And I think you know I think what, what Bill is saying is that you know do we go after that now, you know, um, and that is. But where I, you know, I want the track fixed, but I also want other things. I want it all. You know, but if it has <laughs> to be used outside on the fields. Goalposts, track. Oh. How many students are Tracks, there? track first. Goalposts, they can Clear. still kick the football first. Because it's a student use issue. More students are served by the on track. the track than, although I'm a big fan of our football team. Right. No, I'm just talking about what, at what disrepair does awesome. affect programming. Exactly. Meaning we can still play a football game with the, fo the goalposts. We're getting to a point where we can't have a track. Wow. You know? So basically, what I'm saying that there's, of the 110,000, that doesn't include any soft costs as to bidding or what have you that's correct. that correct that's correct so instead of needing an additional 35 we probably need to have an additional 50 so that you have enough money to do it which i don't object if we have it. so in other words what you're saying is we may have to spend 160,000. Yeah. no i'm saying slight no. you're going to take no, no, no. The 85 85 would be 135 not to exceed 135. And we can do that for next spring if we vote it tonight. Yeah. Right? Am I correct on that? Can we transfer We're the open. use the transfer the money from the lighting account 
uh, to offset it and uh, take the rest of it from available funds. So you might, we're going to sit on the 85 rather than kick in the difference. No, he no, that is the most he's kicking in. Let's do kick in 50. Exactly correct. Yeah. Yeah. So can I have a motion on that? Motion. Second. Exactly. Does everybody understand what we're voting on? Where would the extra come from? We're lighting them from those available, available funds. funds. Available but if there, what, but then what happens if there are no available? So funds? then it's a. Well, then we have to come back to the square one. Right. So it's if there are available funds. Because this is the only way you get it ready for next spring's tax. Yep. Correct. Right. I don't. I don't have it. Hold the question. Okay, so the question's oh, been moved. Yeah, he's asking me yeah, what's the next step. I don't know. The question's been moved, so we are voting to take the 85000 from the lights. Can we not use the amount? Because that's not the exact amount, and I don't have the okay, exact amount. Okay, thank you. So we're taking the light money. Raise it any way you want. Yeah. That is legal. And then that's extra good. money, if it is available. Not to exceed 135000 Okay, is everybody okay with that? Um, to put, to fix the track. Everybody good? All those in favor? Can I, wait a minute. Ooh, don't vote. Okay. What if it comes in at 145? Am I gonna hold it up for 10 grand? I, I, I feel better not to exceed 150. We have no idea what the design cost could be on this. None, we have no clue. Or it could be a lot, could be a hundred hundred thousand total cost. Who knows? I, 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 I'm into hundred fifty thousand. I just don't want to. I, I, I think we're out there somewhere where we know, we need not be design costs. We're talking about resurfacing the track. No, but they got to turn. We're not reinventing the wheel. It's an oval. But, but we have to go by mass. <laughs> I have the design and we just know it's that. a quarter mile. Design I cost. I don't know if main track is still in business or who does them now. But you call them guys and tell them we have got to have our track resurfaced. Mass general okay. law is very specific about making improvements to public lands. This is a public land, it's not a public building. So that's a chapter 132. And depending on what the, the cost could be, there's automatic design fees that you have to have a design by an architect done. It's the law. I didn't write it, I don't like it. Someone's got a hell of an architect lobby up there. No offense to any architects. Would you like 150? I just don't want to get stopped. If it comes in at 145, we're going to stop the whole process for 10 grand. Leave it to discretion of the chairman at that point. <laughs> but if we say 150, what if it comes in at 155? Well, I'm done then. Then, then, I'm, then, then, then. then I'm done with the guessing games, and we're not going to come to you until we know exactly how much it's going to cost. Well, Bob, Bob just did pull $110,000 <laughs> out of the air. There was some thought and some planning on $110,000. So I can't imagine. Another thirty-five or forty thousand dollars is going to be needed to do what we need to do on that track, but people are skeptical on it. Well, I just figured that we could yeah. bought some bill. We go through the, the sure. state requirements. Uh -huh. They make it cost cost inefficient. Then, uh, how much did the architect cost to go through and come up with a design for this enclosure? Spent eight, eight or ten thousand dollars. Was it about eight or ten? Okay, I thought we had a limit of up to 6000 well, no. well, yeah. that was yeah. for the preliminary design, okay. and then we paved them a little bit more. Well, that's do right. The, so that doesn't get written documents. Yeah. That's the problem. Right. That gave us a scope as the, the one cap. Okay. All right, what Heidi's saying is you're going to have to go through and make bid ready documents to comply with the state statute, and it's going to complicate it. So. But does it cost any more money? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. always does. Uh, ask dear for what they spent on their roof over there, and they could have got somebody to do it for half the price. Wow. Oh, yeah. By breaking no. the law. Let's not go there. Yeah. Stand, stand yeah. down. Not, stand yeah. Those were false focus. assertions. Focus, yeah. focus, focus, everybody, focus. Okay. There is a motion um, on the floor, I think. Yeah. There's a motion on and the floor. Was the motion was for 135? Called. Yeah. Yes. And it was called at 135? Yes. yes. Um, I'd be more comfortable voting that motion and then we can always have a meeting, a, a quick meeting, emergency meeting if we need to. We need a 48 hour notice to the drift. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. So, all those in favor of spending up to $135,000, we are unanimous. Thank, Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Patty. I'll see you in August.
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Well, we don't have enough money for the track. <laughs> I think that, uh, that, thank you. I'm, I'm happy I, for I, us. I, I think, um, anyways, I'm going to call We're probably in trouble because it said no votes. Thank you. May I see you, too? Well, we're we're no, you're not going home yet. Yeah. I apologize because I, I was trying to save paper and print it out so both sides are different. Can I just talk about this amendment? This is yeah. a discussion. So, moving along, discussion only of an amendment to policy EEA, student transportation. Lynn, go for it. Thank you. So, we have this uh, policy, and I think everyone had it in their packet. What we would like to do on uh, number nine, this is our school bus transportation policy. Number nine states, uh, grades K to three students will not be released from the vehicle, meaning the bus, unless a parent, guardian, or designated caregiver, we'd like to insert the words, or sibling in grade four or higher is present. If this occurs, the child will be returned to the school. So currently, this is our practice, and it's been this, the practice for many years. When a child is in kindergarten to grade three, either a parent or a caregiver or a guardian is there when the child gets off the bus, or the older sibling gets off the bus with the younger child. This has been our practice. We'd like to put it in the policy to make it official, that this is what we do. But if, essentially, we've been doing this anyway. I'd like for us to think about it, and come back in September to vote on it. We could uh, be honest, suspend the rules and vote on it. I think you've already wanted to. I think you already wanted to. We don't have any little guys. It's going to take me two minutes. Sorry. So, committee and chairman, we have none collaborative. Lynn, do we have anything from the collaborative? No. <laughs> I didn't go. I didn't That's okay. Class. Um, Business managers left the building. Principal? Uh, it's, it's basically the report was going over this stuff. Um, we have end of year. Graduation was success. It was one They came, they, they got educated, they left. Yeah, they came. Um, they hopefully. They were a good little class. Really good, I believe. Very nice. Um, superintendent's report. I, I just handed it out. Let me pass this along. So my report, um, and you know, I actually wrote this report last month. Um, not last month, but I was receiving emails, and it's ironic because there was uh, an article in the paper, um, and it wasn't essentially about. It was a much more complex issue. It just seemed to be basically about communication, but it, it really, it wasn't. It was about a personnel decision. However, allow me to share this report. The first thing I'd like to do is tell you that um, I appreciate everyone's evaluation of me. It, it really was helpful, and I do want to be the most, the, a much, uh, the best superintendent possible, and I would like to meet everyone's needs. So I've been asked to improve communication with families and stakeholders. We have so many outstanding activities, opportunities and activities happening in our district. And what I'd like to point out in this day and age when families are using Facebook like crazy, um, they're using Amazon, eBay, Craigslist, I would also like to help families understand that we have some great information, pretty much almost everything you need to know on our website, particularly Frontier's website. Uh, Frontier, every activity for every day of every month is posted. There's a calendar and it's interactive. You can change it the month by the month, but every single day has an activity posted, all the activities. The Frontier Regional School newspaper, the Red Hawk Report, is also posted on our website. It's full of information and, and photos of things that have happened and will take place. This is such an active school. Next year, we're hoping to be televising our student-led morning news on the website as well. Uh, we have 24 clubs and activities in this school alone. And when you go on the website, each activity if you want to click on the debating club, you, there's a link to click on all 24 activities with information. 
Of course, our sports program has a dedicated link. Uh, there's so many teams and matches all the time. Um, there's an alumni link, a student health page with information and forms for family to use, families to use, a library media site with information in all the research applications students use in the library, as well as the catalog, our monthly lunch me uh, menus. On the district web, web page, you'll find a large amount of information, including the superintendent's monthly, monthly report, upcoming events, the parent portal for PowerSchool, which helps parents really keep track of where their kids are, where their students are, in their activities, I mean, in their classes, and their academics. Are they missing something? Whatever. Our district mission and our vision statements are on the web page. Our complete staff directory, our curriculum plan for the district, access to every school in the district, and enlightening information about our early release practices. While each school has their own website, the district also posts important district news and events on the district page. Again, our school committee agendas, our meetings are all posted. Um, the communication with families about grades, academics, and progress in classes is easy with our parent portal system. Um, if you go to the site, you can look up all your students' classes and how they're doing in each class at any time. You may email your individual teachers if you have specific questions about your child, and they will respond in a timely fashion. Our Frontier guidance page is really full of information. They have SAT and ACT exam information, college visit dates, college visit dates, college search information, employment information, handbooks and forms, homework calendars, curriculum maps, yearbook information, school trips, and again, all the emails, scholarship, financial aid, and more. All of this is available right on our web page with connections, numbers to contact people, emails to contact any, uh, any professional working in this building, and they will answer you. They're a very dedicated group of people. Um, the uh, administrative office is convenient. All the phone numbers, email addresses, and other contact information is available on the website. Um, when we, I encourage principals to use the all-call system or the school messenger system to notify parents in the event of anything that might have happened or other important events or invite them to come to activities. Uh, and again, we also notify all our families when there's a delay or a snow day. Now, many of us have been working for years and years, and I can remember we used to do, as a, as a teacher, we used to do the phone tree. And if you tried to reach someone and they didn't pick up the phone, then the phone tree was broke. But anyway, now we call, and I make every, every effort to call the night before so that parents can make plans for their students. Um, also, too, uh, at Frontier, each during the summer, Frontier Regional mails a package of information to every student's home that includes a form for parents to fill out so they can reach, report changes to medical and demographic information to ensure that the information we have listed is correct. We also send home a hard copy of the school calendar, free and reduced at lunch applications, notices from the nurse, and any other changes to our procedures that families should be aware of. I have set the goal of having at least two newspaper articles about our many and varied programs and accomplishments in the Greenfield Recorder each month. We are trying hard to reach our families and we continue to strive to improve. Input from families is also very helpful as we try to think of ways outside the box to reach as many people as we can. There is a lot of information out there. We're constantly working on ways to familiarize families about the great things we are doing as an educational organization. We enjoy an excellent reputation as an excellent school district because our faculty and staff work diligently in meeting the needs of our students and families. I'm proud and excited to be part of this school district and I will work nonstop to ensure that we continually improve on our efforts to reach out to the community. And thank you again for your support of our fine schools. So I would just like to uh, finish that up with um, 
we are trying, we are out there. Sometimes we, we give so much information. Sometimes I hear people, well, we're not communicating. What we're not communicating is the answer they want to hear. We may be communicating, but they, they just don't like what the you know, decision is, but we are really trying to be proactive. And I would, uh, I would encourage all of you, and I'm sure you have, looked at our website. It is very, very full of information. You can really get a feel, a feel for this district. When I came to apply for a job as superintendent, I already felt at home just by going through every page in the district. I learned so much. Thank you for letting me say that. Thank you. Um, September. Now you can say. Second. All those in favor? And we're done.